studio. I would appreciate it if you can like and subscribe and leave any video recommendations down in the comment section. And be sure to check out my website s15studio.com where I have courses on Revit and AutoCAD. I'm currently running a 50% off sale on my Revit course beginner to advanced level so be sure to check that out before it expires. So we're now going to continue on with our project and we're going to open up our ground floor plan. First thing we're going to do is add in structural openings to our project. So I'm coming up to the top end here. So a structural opening will create an opening within the wall and there will not be a door in place of it. So it allows us to freely move between the rooms. The structural opening is part of the door family. So in order to bring it into the project, we first must go to our door tool. We then go to load family. And it can either live in two locations. One would be in the doors folder, there's structural. Or you can have an openings folder. And in there, you'll also have the opening door for the structural opening. I'm going to go to the doors family, go to structural and choose the door opening that way. I then press open, put it in place. And once it's loaded into our project, we can then come back and create our own type to match the opening that we desire. So what I'm going to do is come up to the quick access panel, choose measure between two points. And between those two walls, we have exactly 1000 millimeters and we just need to create our type to match that. So we'll select our door opening, go to edit type, duplicate, I'm going to rename that 1000 by 2100 millimeters, press OK. We'll then come down to our dimensions. We have rough opening, change that over to 1000 and 2100, press OK. So there's our structural opening in place. So now we didn't cut out the wall itself. We just place an opening in. So we're able to freely walk through and those dashed lines indicate that this isn't a complete opening, that there is a wall above it. So when the builder on site was going to construct this building, they'll see that dashed line that will indicate that there is a wall above that opening. Next, we'll add in a structural opening to this section here. So again, we'll select it, create similar and place it in just make sure that it is in the correct location if it's not you can either use your arrow keys or select it move and move it into place we're going to add in another structural opening here but there's currently no wall for us to place that so i'm going to select this wall drag it over and attach then come back select the structural opening create similar and just pop it in place we want to extend this opening to the total width of that corridor. So we'll go to our measure tool and it's 1250. So we'll select it, edit type, duplicate, remove the two, make that 1250. And same in our rough width, press OK. And we just need to place it into the final position using the move tool. So now we have a structural opening at this point here and at the top. Next, we're going to add in, we have a, a deck in the back. We're going to add in another deck here in the middle, in the middle of the house where we have our double doors exiting to the back garden. So we'll do the same as we've done before and we can select our deck. If we can't select it, we'll turn on select element by face down in the bottom right hand corner. We then select the deck, create similar and we're now in the create floor boundary and I'm just going to use my rectangle tool attached to the corner of the external wall to the bottom left hand corner there green tick to finish so if I go to my 3d view there's the beginning of our deck I'll go back into my ground floor and we want to place the step on the ground level so I'll open up my ground level plan Come back up i'm going to mimic the step at the back here so we can select it create similar and we'll first place our run we'll go to create sketch first our boundary our step will be 240 same on the back 240 create our riser top and bottom and our stair path as well just right in the center and what i want to do is extend that path past the corner of the building by about 200 mils so we have a nice step around the edge so i'll we'll select it use the move tool move it up by 200 mil 
same on the lower section as well 200 mil green tick to finish and green tick to finish again so we're getting that pop up because the levels are not correct so we'll select it we'll go to our base level is set correct to ground level our top level is incorrect so we'll change that to ground floor now if we go to my 3d view there is our step it is facing the wrong direction so what we need to do is go back to the ground level select it hit the flip arrow and then in the 3d view it's in the correct location i'll just delete the railing so there we have our step going from the ground level up to the ground floor so now we're going to close the ground level come over to the ground floor plan and we also have a step from our garage which is on the ground level up to our corridor which is on the ground floor so we'll do the same process we will select our deck and if we can select it go to select element by face select it create similar go by rectangle i'm just going to place it in and then come back and adjust the dimensions so we have 1100 we'll change that to 1000 by 1200 green tick to finish and then the same again for the step we'll go to create similar boundary by 240 and we then have the riser and the stair path green tick green tick so again we're getting the warning because of the levels are incorrect so we'll select it put our base down to ground level our top is ground floor and if i go to my 3d view So there's a couple of ways that we can see into the garage so we can see that step first thing we can do is we can select the roof and if we come down to the glasses symbol in in the view controls that's our temporary hide isolate if i select that i can go to hide element and now i'm able to see inside the garage what i'm going to do is undo that so we can i can show you different ways so if I select the glasses again, I can go to reset temporary hide. Another option could be changing our visual style over to wireframe. And now we can see inside again. But when I try to select or click anything, the roof gets in the way. So pull it back to consistent colors. The next way will be to go to the properties palette for our view. So press double escape there just to pull up the properties of the view. We can then scroll down to section box, turn that on. And what that does is it puts a box around our house. Now what I need to do is select the box and I get grips on every face of that box. And if I drag it back, it'll cut a section into our building. So there I can see the stairs and I can also drag it down to remove the roof. So now I'm able to edit that step as I wish. So if I turn up the section box and the other way I can show you would be to use the displace elements. So if I select the roof, I can come to the modify tab, which appears. And here in the view section there, we have displace elements. If I select that, it applies the gizmo to the roof. And what the gizmo allows me to do is move it in any direction, X, Y, and Z. So if I click on the blue arrow pointing up, I can actually drag that up out of the way. And I can now edit inside the building. And this will not affect the actual roof position itself. We can do all of our edits as we wish. And then to reset it, we just select our roof. We then go to reset and it just puts the roof back down in the correct position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the roof, go to hide element, and I can then come into the garage. I'm going to select the railings and delete them, and we can see that the stairs needs to be flipped again. So just save the project when, when prompted. So I just need to flip the step. So I'll go to my ground floor, and I can flip it, come back to the 3D view. 
And I want to delete out the stringers at the end of the step there. So I'll select it. I can double tap or go to edit stairs. Select the string and delete. Select the string and delete. Press green tick to finish. So if I wanted to keep the roof off the building for the remainder of the project and remove the blue or cyan color border around the view, I can go back to my temporary hide isolate and I can press apply to view. So now our roof is no longer on the building, but if I wanted to bring it back at any point, I would just select the reveal hidden element, select it and toggle it back. So with the roof off, we were able to see our structural opening. So there is our structural opening with the wall on the top, same in the center section and to the rear as well. Come back to my ground floor plan. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add in a chimney to the project. So in the center of the house here, we have this void here, and we're gonna enter in, we're gonna place our chimney here. To do that, I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, go to the Component tool, go to Load Family. If I go back to my UK folder, I then go to the Generic Models folder, and there I have Generic Model Masonry Chimney Wall. So I'll press that, press Open. And then I just come into my wall void, and when it situates itself and it finds the center point, I'm going to click to place. So there we see that the chimney is sat in the void. And if I go to my 3D view, we see it also creates an opening in the wall for us. What we need to do is actually adjust the height of our chimney. So if I come back to reveal hidden element, there's our chimney stack and it's now towering over our roof. What we want is about one meter from the from the top of our roof level. So I'm going to select my roof and go to unhide element and then close it down. So there we can see our chimney. It's, it's pretty high from the top of our roof level. So I'm going to go to my east elevation. And we can't see the roof right now because of the way our elevation bubble or marker is situated on the plan. So I'll go back to my ground floor. There's my east elevation. If I click on the front of it or the bubble, the beak of the bubble, you can see there's the start of my elevation and there's the end of my elevation. That's why we're getting it cut through our project like that. So I'll just drag it back to the, to the far west side of the house. And now if I go back to my east elevation, we're able to see everything. And if I change that to consistent colors. So what I need to do is I need to adjust the height of our chimney. So first thing we're going to do is just Select our levels and just drag them on the outer side of our project so they're nice and clear. And I'm going to place in a new level, but I'm not going to create a plan. So we have a couple of ways to do that. We can either select it, we can go to copy and just drag it up. And we notice that it is black while the levels with plans are blue. So our level three is black and you'll see in our project browser, it is not created. So we don't have a level three in our project browser. So why we would create these levels is for scenarios like this. So we're able to just add in levels. We're able to attach to those levels. So if I select my wall, if I go to top constraint, there's my level three. So I can pull that wall right up to level three. What I want to do with it today is just select it and move it to the top of the roof and then select it again and copy it up by one meter. So I can, you can either use the temporary dimensions so when we reach a thousand, we just click or you can type it in. So that's the top that I want my chimney to be at. And what we need to do is select it. We'll go to edit type. We're now going to duplicate it and we're going to leave the number two for now and press OK. Press OK. And what we want to do is have the top of the masonry, which is this section here, sit on this level. So our chimney is going off our ground floor. So what we need to do is place in a dimension from the ground floor up to level four. And it sits at five, four, nine, eight. So then I select my chimney, go to edit type. There's my top of masonry. That's 
5498. Press OK. And there we see our the top of the chimney has now come down in line with these with this level. We then just need to adjust the name. So we'll select it, edit type, rename. We can remove the two and we just adjust the height, which is 5498. Press OK, press OK, and we can then delete out those levels. So there's our chimney sat a meter above the top of our roof. And if I select and hide the roof, we can see it's sitting nicely in the void. It's created the opening in the wall as well. Come back to my ground floor. Next, what we're going to do is add in furniture to the project. And the first thing we're going to do is add in some cars into our garage. So now we're going to add in a car to the project. Some Revit libraries will have a car, some not. But I want to bring in a car that I've downloaded from an online source. The car that I'm going to use is in the file share folder on my website, s15studio.com. If you just log in, go to the YouTube section, you'll be able to get all of these files for free. So then once you download that file, you need to double click it to open it. And then once the file is open, you may need to upgrade the file as this was created in an earlier version. And with Revit, you're able to open up earlier files, but they do require to be upgraded. If you're working on an earlier version in Revit, you cannot open newer files. So just keep that in mind. And how we bring this file into our project, we'll go to load into project and close. That's going to load the car into the project and close this current car project. Just select our house project, press OK. And then we can place it into the garage and I'll place a second one side by side. So then if I go to my 3D view, there are the two cars within the garage. Come back to the ground floor plan. I just need to select those and use the arrow keys just to pull them down so they're not touching off the step. So continuing with the furniture, we'll come down to the bottom right hand room here and we're going, we're going to add in a bed and chest of drawers. So we'll go to component and you may have a bed loaded in to your type selector, but if not, we'll go to load family, come back, go to furniture, beds, and in here we have various different bed types. So you can choose any one of those, whichever one you prefer. What I'm going to choose is bed number one, press open, click into place, and I'll then select the bed itself and open up the type selector. And we have three different types. We have a twin, double, and a queen. So we're going to leave it at queen. And what I want to do is add in two side tables to the bed. So we'll go to component, load family, we'll go back a folder, we'll go to tables. And in the tables folder, we have various different tables we can choose from. What I want to do is come down to table nightstand, we'll click that, press open, load into project. We'll then select it, move it to the corner of the bed. I then want to mirror it across to the other side, select it. We'll use mirror by pick axis. We'll look for the center axis there and it will mirror it across to the other side. And what I want to do is place multiple beds in the project. And instead of me taking one, copying all of this, as we have three items in front of us, what I'm going to do is create a group and group them together. So we're able to easily copy and paste them into other rooms. So we'll select all three. I'm just holding down the control key. We'll then go to the create panel and we have create group. So I'll click on that and I'll call it queen bed. Press OK. So now we have created a group, which is our bed and side table. So we're able to easily move them around and those side tables are attached to the bed at all times. Now we just need to rotate it into place. So while it is selected, I'll click rotate, go to the top 90 degrees, pull it down to zero, and then move in from touching to the midpoint of the bed, going to the wall. So now it's in the roughly in the position I want. I can select it, use the arrow keys to do some final adjustments to where I'd like it to be. And now that's placed in our room. Next, I want to bring in a 
wardrobe into the project. So we'll go to component, load family. We'll go to storage. And we have various different types of storage within that folder. Down at the bottom, we have wardrobe. So I'll click that, press open. And before I place it, I can use the space bar to flip it into the correct orientation. Select it, pull it back to the wall. So I can select that and I can up that to a 1200. So what we can now do is copy our bed up to the other rooms. So I can select the bed, drop it in here, rotate it around and place it from the midpoint of the bed to the midpoint of the wall. Do the same copy and I can rotate it again 180 degrees go from the midpoint of the bed to the midpoint of the wall and up again drop it into the rear room up from 90 from 90 around to 180 and drop it in so now we've dropped in our beds we'll come back and select our wardrobe I'm going to copy it into this alcove here. Use my rotate tool to rotate it around. Drop it into from one corner of the wardrobe into the corner of the wall. So our wardrobe doesn't fit into the alcove. So what we need to do is just measure the alcove distance, which is 1500. And when we select the wardrobe, we'll come in and select the 15 by 1800. And then we can drop it into place, select it, use our mirror, pick by axis, go to the center point of the wall, flip it around, and then use the flipping arrows to flip it around to the other side. We'll select the wardrobe again, copy, and drop it up to the top here as well. So now we place in the beds and wardrobes into our bedrooms. We'll come back down to the lower bedroom here, and we have a little walk in wardrobe in this room here. And um, what we're gonna do first is place in a structural opening. And we can select the opening here, create similar, drop it into place. So I wanna reduce that down to uh, 750. So we'll select it, duplicate, rename it to 750, change our width to 750 and then just move the opening back to the far right. We can then select our wardrobe, copy, and from the bottom left-hand corner, we can place it to the bottom left-hand corner of our walk-in wardrobe. And I can copy another one up to the corner, use the rotate tool to rotate it around, drop it into the corner. So what we want to do is we want these to be equal distance, and we also wanna create a second one here. So what we need to do is edit the width of this. So we want the width of our wardrobe at the top to be about seven, seven, eight, eight. So we'll select the wardrobe, edit type, duplicate, change it to seven, eight, eight, seven, eight, eight. And we can then move it to the adjacent wall. And same here, we have 1700. So we want to select this, duplicate, and we'll make this 850 in width. And we can select it, copy, like so. So this is kind of a crude way to create your walk-in wardrobe. It does leave a space at the top. How you would create this in reality, it would take some time, is to create a bespoke component that will wrap around. But just for the beginning of this series, that's how I'm going to place it. And later on, I can show you how we can create a more detailed spec wardrobe in this space. So now that we have our walk-in wardrobe here, we don't actually need this wardrobe down here. So we can convert that into just a chest of drawers. So we can go to our architecture tab component load family and we have a dresser we can select that and open 
And if we rotate it around and then place it in. So now we just have a simple dresser opposite our bed with our walk-in wardrobe. Next, we're gonna move up here. We're gonna create a shower room and a toilet in the back. So we're gonna place a shower tray in this corner. And to do that, we'll go to our component, load family, go back a folder. We'll go to plumbing, architectural, and we have fittings and fixtures. So just think that your fittings are all of the various different fittings required for, for our plumbing and that, and our fixtures will be our baths, showers, and toilets, and so on. So there's our shower. We have all the different shower components for us. So what I want to do is choose the shower tray square, press open, and when I place it in, we see already it's a 1200 by 900. So that's perfect, that's what I want, as our opening is 1200. Next, I want to add in our sinks. So we'll go back to component, load family, We'll go back a folder. There's our sinks. And we have various different types of sinks that we can choose from. And the one that I want to use today will be the sink bathroom with shelf one. If you don't have that in your library, just choose something that is similar to this. Press open, place it in. And how I know where the front of the sink is, is with the flipping arrow. So the flip arrows show me the front of our sink. So if I rotate it around 90 degrees, place it into the corner, and I want to flip it on that axis. So we have a double sink in the shower room. Lastly, I'll just add in a toilet into this back room here. Again, we'll go component, load family, go back a folder. And here we have water closet, and we have 2D bidet, 2D toilet, a 2D wall hung, a regular WC. Um, and what I want is the wall mounted toilet. Press open, use my space bar to flip it around, attach to the midpoint of the wall. So other things that you could do to this room, you could add in a towel rail, a shower screen, uh, some storage units and so on. So you can develop that room further as you wish. Next, we'll come up to the main bathroom towards the left, upper left hand side of our of our house and what i'll do is i'll add in another shower tray into this corner a sink and a bath so we'll go to component there we have our shower trays and what i want to do is just use a 900 by 900 use my space bar to flip it around so the drain is in the bottom right hand corner drop it into position then go to component load family and what I want to do is look for my bath. So go to bathtubs. And again, we have various different types of baths that we can include. I just want to go for bath one, press open. And I can use my, my space bar to rotate the bath around into the correct orientation. And the dimensions of my bath that I want to choose will be an 800. And in the type selector, we don't have that. So we'll go to edit type, duplicate, remove the two, change it to 1800 go to my length 1800 then go to the bottom left hand corner like so i want to finally just place in the sink unit like we have done down here so we'll select that create similar drop it into place and we'll see that it's the wrong orientation so we'll just rotate it around use my move tool drop it into position we can use arrow keys to center it a little bit better. So again, you can put in a towel rail, shower curtain, and a shower screen as well. And move up next to the laundry room. So what I want to add into the laundry room will be same like we have in the bedroom, which is a furniture dresser. So we can store various clothes within this room. And we can see the dresser is interfering with the door as it's too big. So we'll select it and we can first we'll reduce it down to the 1525 in height and then we'll adjust the width. So we'll duplicate. If we reduce it down to an 1100 dresser. Press OK. And then just 
move it back into the corner. So now the door swing, there's no complications when our door opens with no problem. Next, I want to add in a cleaner's sink as well as a dryer and washing machine. So we'll go to component. First, we'll add in our sink. So we'll go to load family sinks. And in here, we have a cleaner's sink. So we have one, two, and three. I'll just go for cleaner one. Press open use my space bar attach it to the wall and now i want to add in a washing machine and a dryer so we'll go component load family we'll go back to the main folder and here we'll go to specialty equipment domestic and there at the bottom we have washer press open for the washer and dryer they need they must be hosted on a wall. So you see, I get the symbol there. So I cannot place my washing machine anywhere randomly in my house. I have to host it on a wall. So we do the same for our dryer in the same folder. So there we have our dryer, press open, and again, drop it to the wall. So now we have a little washroom here. We could in the future add a tabletop to these. So we have a workspace above our dryer and washer. You'll know how to do that in a few moments as we create our kitchen. So I'm just gonna move the dryer a little bit closer to the wall and the washing machine and pull our sink out as well. Next, we'll add in a toilet and our sink. So we'll come back down, select my toilet, create similar. Space bar to flip it around and push it attached to the midpoint of that wall. Use the same sink here. Go to the midpoint to the midpoint and we just need to adjust the width. So width there is 760, so we'll select it. And we don't have a 760, so we'll go to edit type, duplicate, 760. Shelf length 760, press OK. So now our sink fits nicely in our WC. Next, we'll come up to the very back room. And in here, we're going to create our couches and televisions. This will be our television room. We'll go to Component, Load Family. And there we have a TV stand. We'll click that, press Open, flip it around. And then once placed, we can go back to component, load family. And we have a TV flat screen. We'll click that, press open. Again, spacebar to flip it around. Place it onto our stand. But our TV is sitting on our ground floor. If I go to the 3D view, come around to the back. We'll see there the TV is sitting on the floor. So we need to increase the offset from the ground floor so it sits on top of our TV stand. And our TV stand is 500 mil high. So we'll select the stand elevation from ground floor 500. And now it's sitting on top. Back to the ground floor, we'll add in our couches, component, load family, come back to our Furniture folder, we have our seating, and we have various different types of seating in here. What we're looking for is our sofa. We have sofa one, two, we have a couch viper and a chair viper. So we'll go for the couch viper. Again, if you don't have this in your library, you'll just choose something similar. I'm gonna push that into the corner and use my space bar to flip it around like so, and then use my arrow keys to bring it closer to the wall. So you could further add more storage, a little side table, you can add in a flowers, that kind of thing. You can, there are carpets as well, some mirrors, pictures, you can add all of that from the library. So with the couches, I'll use the same couches. So we'll select it and put them in to our main living space. and flip it around we can then add a small coffee table 
we have coffee table one, two, and three. If I go for coffee table two, you can place it in the center point there, select it, and I'll go for the 900 by 1800. And then lastly, we're gonna add a little bookshelf here in the corner, back to component, load family, storage, and we have the bookshelves, press open, flip it around, place it into the corner. So my flipping arrow is on the right, so I know that the orientation is correct. And if I go to my 3D view, there we can see our TV room in the back, our bedroom in the back as well with the wardrobe. We have our washer room. We can see our sink is sitting on the floor, so we can select it, up that by 700. Same on our WC. There we can see our living space with our bookshelf and chimney. There's the bedroom in the back with the wardrobe. Our garage. There we have our walk-in wardrobe. Our small shower room. And we'll select those and up them to 700 as well. So this window we can see is cut to the level of our sink. So we just need to adjust that as well. So we select it, go to edit type, duplicate, and we can make that a 1410, press OK. There's our height, 1410, press OK. Then go to our sill height, up that to 700. So now our window sits right on our sink. And we'll go back to our ground floor. So we'll come to our rear deck and we'll add in a tables and chairs. We'll go to component, load family, come to our tables folder. There I have a dining rectangular. So if I click that space bar and place it centrally on our deck, we then just need to add in a couple of chairs around that. So we'll go back to the component, load family, back a folder, seating. There we have furniture chair. Click open, space bar to flip it around. And then I'll select it, use my mirror by pick axis. I can then copy it to the other side. Move it into position, then flip by axis, select, holding down control, and again by axis. Now we have all the furniture in place in the project. We're now going to move on and focus on the kitchen and create a bespoke kitchen. So now we're going to create a kitchen. And when we're creating a kitchen, all of the cabinets and our equipment are always a standard size. There'll be 300, 400, 450, 600, mill wide this obviously depends on your region of where you are the dimensions will be different but there will always be standard sizes so this makes it easy for us to generate kitchens quickly so when you're designing your internal layouts you need to keep that in mind to make sure that everything is of equal spacing to fit all of your cabinets so this project i've already worked on and figured out all of those dimensions so all of the walls are in the correct position already but when you're designing you're going to be pulling walls into position to get everything accurate so you can fit so you can equally fit all of these cabinets so what i'm going to do first is place a corner cabinet here we'll go to component load family come back to the main folder and we have casework if i double tap that we have our base countertops shelving 
tall cabinets and wall cabinets. We also have a little casework handle as well. So I'm gonna go for my base canvas. We're gonna start on the base. We're gonna add in our equipment, put on a countertop, and then go to our wall cabinets. So we'll go to base cabinet. So we have all the different styles of base cabinets that we can include. All we want to do is just choose the particular style and then we can adjust the width of those. So we have our three corner units. And how I know the difference of the styles, if we click on the first one, our handles are horizontal. Second one, our handles are vertical. And the last one, we have an angled door. So we have three different styles there. I'm gonna go for the second one. So we have our vertical handles. Choose open. And I'll save the project. And that's cancel that. So I'll just go back, component, load family, go to corner double door two, press open and just drop it into position. I can also use the space bar to rotate that. So then use my rotate, pull it into the corner. And if I come to my 3D view, there we can see the start of our kitchen. Let's go back to my ground floor. I'm gonna work my way up now. So now we've added in our corner unit. Next one I'm gonna do is gonna work my way up. And the next unit I want to put in is a, is a dishwasher. So we'll go to component, load family. We'll go to specialty equipment, domestic. There I have dishwasher and dishwasher wall mounted. So I'm just gonna choose dishwasher, flip it around and then place it into my project attaching to the wall. So the dishwasher width is 610, which isn't the standard for what I want to use this in, as typically a dishwasher itself is only 555 wide, and then it is allowed to fit into a 600 mil casement. So I need to select that, edit type, duplicate, and I'm gonna change that to 600. So it fits within a 600 mil casement. And press OK. So when you're doing your own kitchens, just check with the manufacturers of their widths and make sure that you include all of those different tolerances into your kitchen. Next, we're gonna add in the next base cabinet. So we'll go to component, load family. We'll go back to casework base cabinets, and we want to choose a single door. So we have door one, two, and three. So we see the different styles again. We have a horizontal handle, vertical handle, and then a slimmer unit. So we'll go for door two, press open, and we'll just place it into our project. So we see the flipping arrows are on the bottom. So we need to rotate that around so they're to the front or the left side. And this unit is also 500 mil wide. So I need to go to edit type, duplicate, make a 600 and press okay. So there we have our 600 unit base cabinet. We'll then use the move tool, go to the bottom right and make sure that we attach it to the wall, which is this line here because this current line is our window sill. So we'll select it and just move it into position. Then if I go to my 3D view, we see the door handle is on the right and I want it to be on the left. So I'll select it, use my flipping arrow. And then in the 3D view, we see it's now on the left-hand side. Back to the ground floor. If I select it, I just want to flip it over to the other side. So I'll select it. I'll go to mirror pick access, go to the edge of the unit and it will flip it into place. So there we have both door handles are aligned in the correct orientation we'll now move on to the next section here go back to our ground floor plan and i want the same base unit as above here so we'll select it create similar we'll then rotate it around use the move tool into place so in the 3d view we have it there and the handle is on the right hand side which is correct then go back to my ground floor plan. 
So next what I want to do is add in an oven unit and we will go to component, load family. We're in the domestic folder. And we have a couple of different types of units for our oven. We do have a, we have a hob, an under counter unit, an electric hob, hoods, and a gas cooker and gas hob. I wanna just place in our gas cooker, press open. So there we have it there, place it in and go to the 3D view just to make sure it's the right orientation and it's not, so we'll select it. Rotate it around 90 degrees and there's our gas cooker. So the gas cooker, we just need to align with our cabinet. So we'll just pull it forward so it's in line and there's a gap for ventilation in the back. Next, for our next base unit, I want to include a different casework. So we'll go to component, load family, come back to our casework, base cabinet, and I want to include a vanity cabinet. So the vanity cabinet is a mixture of two lower double doors and a cutlery drawer at the top. We also have one with a large lower door and two smaller drawers, three doors or two either side. I wanna choose the cabinet with two side drawers. So there's our vanity unit. What I want for this vanity unit, as it's only 900 wide, is I want that to be 1200. So we'll go to our drop down menu and change it over to a 1200. Then move it into position. But if I go to my 3D view, we'll notice the height is incorrect as it's only a 710. So we need to duplicate this and create a 860 as the other cabinets are 860 high. So we'll select it, edit type, duplicate, change it to 860, then go to our height and change that to 8, 860. So now the height is correct and it's in line with the other cabinets. Lastly, for this corner, I want to add a fridge. So we'll go back to our ground floor, go to component, load family, We'll come back to specialty equipment, domestic. And in here we have a couple of different types of refrigerators. We have the tall fridge with the ice box. We have a built-in unit. We have a built-in refrigerator and freezer. We have an under-counter refrigerator as well. So I want to go for the refrigerator freezer built-in press open and that must be attached to the wall. So we'll select and push it back, attaching to the wall. So there we have our fridge freezer in place with our vanity unit, our cooker and dishwasher, as well as the corner units and base units. So now that we've done that, what we need to do is place in our countertop. So to place in our countertop, what I'm going to do is go to the ground floor. So we need to bring that in from our library. So we'll go to component, load family. We'll come back to our main folder, go to casework and countertops. So in here we have various different types of countertops that we can choose from. And the one I want to choose will be the top counter with sink. Again, if you don't have this, you can choose something similar that's in your library. Press open. So press the space bar to flip it around. And what I want is my sink to be on the opposite side. So I'll use my mirror draw axis and flip it, delete the other one. I then rotate it around 90 degrees. Now I just want to pull it and attach it into the corner. So I'll use my move tool, go to the bottom right hand corner, right into the corner of the kitchen. If you can't see the lines, just turn on thin lines and then you'll be able to see 
where we can just to make sure that the countertop is fully attached to the corner of the wall. Then I can select the top edge and use the arrows there to drag it into position. And same with this side here. I want to go just to the edge of the cooker. Then if I go to my 3D view, you can see there's my sink. And I want my sink to sit over the lower cabinet here so i'll go to ground floor again and what i need to do is use both of these arrows to move both the sink and the opening so i'll just shift the sink into position and pull the opening with it like so. And when I go to my 3D view, what you'll notice is I'm able to see the casework as it's not cutting directly through there. So we can always use the library components that are given to us, but sometimes we'll run into problems like this. So what we want to do is we want to create our own. So what I'm going to do is select that and delete it. Go back then to my ground floor. So to create our countertop, we're going to use the massing. We're going to use the conceptual mass. So first I go to the massing and site. I'll go to in place mass. And we'll call this countertop. First, we're going to create this section here. So I'll go to my rectangle tool. Pull it over. And what I want to do is select that top line and move it out by 50 mil so now i'll select the two dimensional shape and to convert it into a 3d mass we go to the form panel here and create form so now we have created a 3d form so green tick to finish and what we want to do for this form is to attach the base of the countertop to our cabinet and then give it a depth so we need to go back to our ground floor plan. What we want is an elevation view of this kitchen area. And there's two ways we can do that. We can either choose a section view, and place it in front, but we want to create multiple views of the kitchen. So we'll go to view, elevation, and just place in a marker. So if the elevation is not in the correct location, just select the marker and you can turn on the elevation with the box here, then double tap the beak and there is the form so if I drag that up I can attach it the bottom to the top of the casework but I cannot give it a depth so what I need to do is go to the architecture tab create level but I don't want to create a level that appears in the project browser I just want to create a level that we can use to help us model. So I'll turn off make plan view. And then I'll just draw it in roughly and we can adjust the position correctly now. So because I wasn't able to attach to the top of the cabinet, I just drew it in roughly. I then come back and I know the top, that the height of this cabinet is 860. So we'll select the dimension, change it to 860. And to add depth, what I'll do again, I'll select it, copy, and copy it up by 50 mil. Now when I select the top of the form, I can drag and drop it onto that level. I'll then select and delete out those levels. So there is the beginning of our form. We have to do a little bit more work to it to eventually create it into a solid piece of countertop. But we're going to do the second piece over here as we have to drop in a sink and cut a hole into the form. So I'll go to my ground floor and what I'll do first is add in my sink. So we can get the right location of the sink so we know where to cut out the countertop. So first thing we have to do is drop in our sink so we know where the location is and where we have to cut out the countertop. So I'll go to component, 
load family. Back in the UK folder, I'll go to plumbing, architectural, fixtures, sinks, and we have various different sink types in here. The one I want to choose today is the Hilo double sink kitchen with a drain board number two. Again, if you don't have a sink like this in your folder, just select something similar. And the sink is in our project. Next, I want to change the orientation. So hit the space bar, space bar, space bar, and place. So the tap, which is shown here as a circle, is in the right location, but my drain board is on the wrong side. So I need to flip that. So I'll select it, mirror pick axis, go to the edge, flip it over, and delete the other one. And what I want is the basin to sit directly into the carcass. So I'll drag it in using my arrow keys to position it correctly. So the basin is going inside the carcass as we have a dishwasher here and that can't be. So now the location is correct. We just double check the height. And to do that, I'll go into my elevation. So I'll double tap here. And we'll use our measuring tool to the underside is at 900. So the top of our cabinet is 860. The thickness of our countertop is 50. So that comes to 910. So we need to push that up by 10 millimeters. So we'll go to elevation, 10, enter. Now we've placed our sink. We're now gonna add in the countertop and we know then where to cut out for our sink. So we'll go back to the ground floor and we'll do the same process. We'll go to massing, in place mass, We'll call this one countertop two, go by line. Out by 650, we'll attach to the top of the countertop for now. Go to the edge of the cooker. And now I just need to bring this line out by 50. So I'll select it, select it again. Once the line is highlighted, Move tool out by 50. So we'll then select the outline, we'll then create form, and we now have the 3D form. But what we need to do is to create the cutout for the sink. So remaining in the in place editor, I will go to rectangle, and you have to do these steps in the same editor. If you close this down and try to come back, we won't be able to cut out the form. So we'll choose rectangle. We'll then go to the top left, cutting out just for the basin. We'll then select the rectangle and where we have create form, we hit the drop down arrow and we choose void form. Green tick to finish. So now when I go to my elevation, there is my mass with the void is down here, but we can adjust the position of that in a few moments. So as we've drawn the other countertop, I can just drag the blue grip up. It's now level. Grab the void grip up and the lower grip to the top of the countertop. So if I go into the 3D view, there's the countertop and if I just delete that sink out. We can see there's the void. And that is accepting our basin. So the last thing we need to do is just to apply a material to this. And how we do that is we apply a roof material to the mass. So when we go to massing in site, we have model by face and we're going to use the roof by face. So we'll select roof. And what we need to do is to create a new roof type, which is which will be our countertop. So if I go to roof generic, the reason I'm doing that is there's only going to be one material in the roof generic. Edit type, duplicate, we'll call it countertop, press OK. I then go to structure, edit, and if I change that to 50 mil, 
For now, I'm going to leave the material blank. The reason being is we're going to cover materials further on in the in this video series. So we'll leave the thickness. So we'll leave the material and just change the thickness to 50. Press OK. Press OK. Now what we need to do is go to multiple selection and we'll select multiple. Once select, we go to create roof. So we'll select the mass. We'll then click on create roof and we've created the countertop. We'll do the same for the other side, create roof, and we've created the countertop. So yeah, as I said, we'll go back over all of the materials to change how they will appear. Because if I come to the realistic mode, we can see even in the Autodesk's library for the materials, the materials aren't great. So the sink is shown as a diamond patterned stainless steel. So we need to go back and change all of those. And we can also see the gas cooker as the wrong material as well. So we'll go back over all of that and show you how we can change it. So we'll go back to consistent colors. And what we need to do is delete out the mass and just leave the countertop. So if I hover over the countertop, we can see a pop-up that says roofs, basic roof countertop. So right now highlighted is our countertop. So if I hit the tab key, it'll now go over to the mass. So then we can select it and delete. Do the same for the other side, hover over, it says roofs. So I hit the tab key, it now says mass and delete. So we've now done the base of our kitchen. We have our sink, cooker, dishwasher, base cabinets and countertop. Next we'll do the extractor hood and the wall cabinets. So I'll go to ground floor. To bring in the extractor hood, I'll go to architecture tab, component, load family. We'll come all the way back to specialty equipment, domestic, and we have exhaust hood. Press open, and this must be placed on the wall. We'll click. We can't see it because the hood is above our view. When we place our hood, the hood position is above our view range, so we're not able to see it. So there's two ways that we can adjust it. We can either go to our elevation view. There it is there, and we can align it to our cooker. Or we can go to our ceiling plan ground floor. So now in our ceiling plan, our view is 2.6 meters from the level. So we're able to see the hood, but we can't see the kitchen. So what I need to do is go to the view range to show more of our view. So if I hit double escape in the properties, this will bring up the properties for the seating plan. Scroll down to underlay, range, base, and if I go to ground level, if I go to ground floor, there's my hood, there's the edge of the cooker, so now I can align it to the gas cooker. I'm gonna leave my seating plan view open, just so when we create our wall cabinets, we will be able to position them as well. So I'll come back to my ground floor plan. Next, we'll do the cabinet. So we'll go to component, load family, go to casework. We're now going to go for wall cabinets. Again, we have various different styles that we can choose from. And what I'm going to choose will be the same. Double door number two, press open and I'll place it into the drawing. So when I select it, we have in our type selector only two types, a 600 and a 1000. We want a 1200 wall unit. So we will go to edit type, duplicate, 1200 and width 1200. And we then just need to adjust the position so if I pull it right back, then I can use the move tool to snap it to the edge. And we'll use the same one on the opposite side. So we can select it, use mirror pick axis, go to the center point, and we've mirrored it across to the other side. So there we can see our cabinets. We can add an additional cabinet in the corner. And it is 
300 so we'll go to component load family what we want is just a single wall unit and we'll go for single door one and 300 is perfect so I'll pop it in use my move tool to attach it in correctly so there we have a nice 300 unit in the middle and then a 1200 cabinet either side of our extractor hood. So now I can go back to my ground floor ceiling plan and I just want to revert it back to none. So when we come back to it later on, we won't have any issues there. And then I can close it down. And our elevation view of our kitchen. So there we have a 3D view of our kitchen. Next, we'll come to our ground floor. I want to delete that elevation marker. And I want to create an island for our kitchen. So I want my island to be aligned with this corner edge here. So I'm going to go to, in the architecture tab, we have a model panel. Go to model line. Just draw straight across. Next, I'm going to choose model line again. And go from the corner there. And I want to move this over by 1000 and choose model line again and move that up by 1000. The reason being is just so we can keep a nice clear walkway around our island. So this will be the edge of our countertop. If I select it, copy out by 50. So we have a nice 50 mil overhang like on the kitchen on the side and then select the line and copy them out by 600 like so so what i want is a couple of base cabinets we'll then have our countertop on the top and it will overhang so we can add some seating so we'll go to component we already have them loaded into the project so it's our cabinets Base cabinet, single door number two, 600 by 600. So click it in. Use my move tool to place it correctly. And I'm not sure which side my door handle is on. So just double check by going into the 3D view. And the door handle is correct. I'll then select it. Mirror it across to the other side. And move it into position. So in the middle there, I want to have pull out drawers. So we'll go to component, load family, come back to base cabinet. And we have a vanity cabinet with three doors. We'll choose that one. And 600 by 600, yes, that's correct. So we'll place it in, then using the move tool to snap it into position. So if I go to my 3D view, we can see there, there we have our cabinets and the vanity unit in the middle. So then go back to ground floor and we need to create our countertop. So we'll do the same as we did with the opposite side. We'll go to massing, in place mass, countertop three. We can go by rectangle. Create form and finish. I can then delete the model lines as we no longer need them. Next, I'll place another elevation view here, but we want an elevation on the opposite side, so I'll tick the box. And just pull the levels away so we can clearly see it. So I can't clearly see what I'm working on there, so I'll go back to ground floor, select it. There's the start of my view, so I'll pull it just in front of the kitchen island and pull back the end of the view. Then go back to the elevation and now we have a nice clear picture of what we're trying to work on so we'll do as we did before we can select the level copy up by 860 and then up by another 50. select the countertop attach to the top attach to the bottom and delete then go to the 3d view We'll go to 
masking and side roof select multiple click and we can then hover over hit the tab key when we see mass we can delete it so there's our kitchen island we'll just place a couple of stools behind that for our breakfast bar component load family we'll come back to furniture seating so we have a couple of different stools that we can choose from what i want to do is choose the stool lab if you don't have this stool choose something similar press open and i can just put it straight to the midpoint and then select it copy it using the midpoint of the cabinet so they're all nicely aligned so there we have our kitchen countertop with our stools for a breakfast bar in our kitchen So that's it for this video we've made some good progress make sure that you like comment and subscribe if you hit the bell symbol you'll get notified when i will post the third part of this series please comment below if there's any videos that you'd like me to create or if there's anything in this series that you want me to include and don't forget to head over to my website s15 studio where i have multiple courses on revit and autocad thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next part